Jacques Damala's marriage to star actress Sarah Bernhardt was a disaster, and their end was even more deranged. It started with Sarah receiving a strange package at her door, one that moved. At first she was confused, then she looked closer and nearly screamed. There have been dark heartthrobs for centuries, but no one was as messed up or as alluring as actor and all-round bad boy Jack Damala. Women found him irresistible, men found him dangerous, and his marriage to the leading actress of his day was one of the most disastrous unions of the 19th century. Born in 1855 to a wealthy Greek family, at a young age he developed a taste for fine wine and finer women, and he knew just how to get both. Just after finishing school, Damala came up with an ingenious plan. He began pursuing diplomatic studies around France, even though he actually harboured secret dreams of becoming an actor. So why diplomacy? Well, partly because it puts him in the path of elite members of high society. He understood that connections were everything. Damala was a man about town in Paris and quickly got a much shadier reputation. Even as he mingled with powerful men, those same men were constantly worried their wives would catch one glimpse of Damala and fall in lust forever. Damala was tall, dark and handsome with a devil-may-care demeanour. People simply couldn't ignore his looks and he was called the handsomest man in Europe. Damala was absolute catnip to the rich, beautiful ladies of Parisian society, and by the time he was in his mid-twenties, he had seemingly seduced every ineligible woman in the French capital. Thanks to him snagging numerous men's wives, they began calling him the most dangerous man in Paris. But he was dangerous not just for the nervous husbands, but also for the lovesick married women who followed him wherever he went. Damala was something of an obsessive, as in he was obsessed with women, with himself, and soon with making it as a stage actor. His dream of becoming a thespian had always been in the back of his mind, so once he'd gone through all the women in the diplomatic world, he decided to try his luck with the theatre crowd. Damala started small in his acting career, playing mostly bit parts and going by the stage name of Daria. But behind the scenes, something much more sinister was going on. He quickly fell in with a bohemian group of actors infamous for taking substances in the green rooms of the theatres before and after shows. And this is when he met his destiny. One of Damala's fellow lotus eaters was an actress named Jeanne, and she just so happened to be the half-sister of the 19th century's most famous actress, Sarah Bernhardt. Jeanne, like so many women in Paris, couldn't help gossiping to her sister that she was socialising with the infamous Jacques de Mala. Bernhardt, an original diva if there ever was one, 11 years de Mala's senior, had taken many lovers before. She was intrigued by his reputation, and the pair set up a meeting. In many ways, it was inevitable that Bernhardt and de Mala would attract each other. It was also an absolute disaster. This wasn't Bernhardt's first rodeo. As her biographer put it, she prided herself on her ability to conquer men, and liked using her notoriously hot temper to keep them in line. Damala, meanwhile, fancied himself as a hunter of women, with no regard for who he ruined. Maybe it's no surprise that, despite each of them approaching it like a game at first, they quickly fell violently in love with one another. But there was one major problem. Just as Damala met Sarah Bernhardt, his dark past caught up with him. Even libertine Parisian society had become too scandalised by his dealings with women, particularly since those women kept leaving their husbands or ending up dead. As a result, his diplomatic unit thought it best to get Damala away from France and reassigned him to St. Petersburg, Russia. It was an exile in everything but name. Sarah Bernhardt, however, wasn't about to pine for her lover long distance, and she moved heaven and earth to get what she wanted. Bernhardt, at the height of her popularity, was just about to head on tour. Seeing an opportunity, she insisted that her managers make St. Petersburg into a six-month stop on the voyage. She dumped her current lover and leading man so that she could arrive in Russia and meet Damala completely free of obligations. 
Once in Russia, Bernhardt languished in a romance with Damala and offered him a role in her company as her co-worker and lover. After all, he was dismal at this diplomacy nonsense anyway, so why not become a real actor at last? For him, it was a dream come true, and he quickly said yes. Although both Damala and Bernhardt were commitment phobes before their relationship, they married in London in April 1882, the same year they met. As information came out about Damala and Bernhardt's fairy tale day, the details got more sordid. When someone asked Bernhardt why she'd decided to marry Damala, she replied flippantly that marriage was the one thing she hadn't done yet. In the meantime, Damala boasted to anyone who would listen that Bernhardt had debased herself to propose to him. When Bernhardt offered Damala a place in her acting troupe, she hadn't considered one crucial thing. He was not a good actor. In fact, he was about as good a thespian as he was a diplomat. People thought he was exceptionally untalented, and his heavy Greek accent made it difficult for audiences to understand him. In the end, critics essentially called him eye candy on stage. As a vain man, it's not like Jacques Damala would have ever handled his lack of talent well, but now he was in the worst possible situation. Bernhardt was famous for a reason, she was an incredible actress, and Damala he simply could not handle being upstaged by anyone, let alone the genius of her generation. It was yet another blow to his ego. Within weeks of their marriage, Damala began exacting his revenge. Beside himself at the thought that his wife was better than him, Damala started belittling Bernhardt any chance he could get, especially if it was in public in front of her friends. At the end of the day, the actress was hopelessly in love with Damala and would always end up shrugging off his insults or asking him for forgiveness for their spats. Sensing he had the upper hand, Damala tried to go for the jugular. Just weeks after their wedding, he made a furious request to Bernhardt. After yet another argument, he commanded her to change her name to Sarah Damala. But Bernhardt refused and Damala went nuclear. He did what he did best, he abandoned Bernhardt, if temporarily. For days she saw neither hide nor hair of him and grew more and more anxious as the nights passed. During this time, people saw him out romancing a young Norwegian girl. On his return, he acted like nothing was wrong. Over the next few months, Damala went into a cruel frenzy. Whenever he and Bernhardt fought, or even just when he felt like it, he would leave their home for days and spend time in the company of other women. Bernhardt tolerated these transgressions and always took him back. One day, Bernhardt discovered that whenever she gave Damala money from her much bigger salary, he mostly used it to buy gifts for his mistresses or favours from women on the street. Bernhardt's friends never understood what in God's name was so great about Damala and were shocked and concerned at how willing Bernhardt was to hurt her career for him. Instead of hiring competent actors, she now insisted on starring alongside the sub-par Damala in all her shows. Bernhardt even bought her own theatre and made him her official leading man for those performances. Desperately trying to make the marriage work, Bernhardt now decided Damala would be perfect in the role of Armand Duval in a stage adaptation of Alexandre Dumas' novel La Dame aux Camélia. While Bernhardt's performance became one of her most famous triumphs, critics again panned Damala, and he, as usual, blamed Bernhardt for his failure. It was the beginning of the end. By December of 1882, just months after he and Bernhardt married, no one in the theatre world was willing to give Damala a chance. When Bernhardt asked the playwright of her upcoming job in Fedora to include Damala, he refused outright forcing Bernhardt to make Damala her tour manager instead. Damala, now utterly frustrated at his lack of fame and blaming everyone but himself, took more and more illicit substances than ever before to assuage his fury, and quickly developed a raging and uncontrollable addiction. Near Christmas in 1882, Bernhardt and Damala got into one of their infamous dust-ups, but this time was different. Bernhardt insisted she would no longer bankroll Damala's various addictions. He responded with his same old pattern, calling her names and abandoning her the next morning to go to North Africa. 
With Damila gone, though his debts were still there, Bernhardt took even more steps away from her husband. Namely, she found a new lover and went on tour in Scandinavia, determined to stop caring about her human wrecking ball. He no longer had such a hold on Sarah, but she did give one last attempt at saving him. Using her money and influence, Bernhardt asked pharmacists to stop giving him medication that only fed his addictions, and even put Damala into a clinic to try to kick his habits. When that didn't work, she set him up in a hotel on the outskirts of Paris. With the theatre world turning its back on him now that he wasn't hitched to Bernhardt's star, Damala tried to re-enter diplomatic life. What he got back was a rude awakening. They didn't want him either. In 1889, six years after his break from Sarah Bernhardt, Damala gave the actress a nasty surprise. She received a message from her estranged husband, and the words shook her to her core. In the letter, Damala told Bernhardt that he was both penniless and dying, and begged her to take him back one last time. Bernhardt had never stopped loving Damala, and without a second thought, she cancelled her obligations and rushed to his side. In the next weeks, Bernhardt nursed the ailing Damala back to some semblance of health, and forgave him all of his sins in the process. Bernhardt made him promise to curb his habits, then cast him again as Armand Duval in the revival of Dame aux Camellia. She was hoping for a triumphant comeback of both their romance and Damala himself, but she wasn't going to get that. Before, critics had ridiculed Damala's limited acting ability, but they at least acknowledged his devastating good looks. Their reaction now was truly depressing. Damala was a transformed man, and not in a good way. Older, haggard, clearly still ill and struggling with addiction, he fumbled his lines and generally reminded everyone that the Grim Reaper comes for us all. Despite his promises, Damala's addiction was too strong to let go of, and it only got worse during this period. It led to even further displays of bad behaviour and rapidly diminishing mental capacity. At one point, authorities found Damala undressed and running through the Hotel de Ville in Milan, which had him spending a few nights behind bars. At this point, Bernhardt and Damala were on and off again, and the increasingly addled Damala seemed to delight in ruffling her feathers. One evening, he even decided to sit in the front row of her new play and make faces at her the whole time, earning him a beating from Bernhardt's new lover. Soon after Damala sent Bernhardt his message begging for forgiveness and help, an extremely disturbing gift showed up at the actress's door. That gift? A bouncing, illegitimate baby girl. Damala had been sleeping with a theatre extra who had the baby, and then decided to dump the little girl with Bernhardt as a particularly cruel message. Bernhardt was understandably humiliated and furious at this evidence of Damala's rampant promiscuity and infidelity, let alone at the implication that she was responsible for the girl. Less understandable though was her next reaction. Her notorious temper got the better of her, and Bernhardt actually contemplated drowning the girl in the Seine. Bernhardt's servants, terrified that she was really going to go through with it, tried to notify Damala. Tragically, at this point, he was far too gone into his addiction to even understand what was happening in front of his own face, so he was absolutely no help in saving his daughter's life. In the end, one of Bernhardt and Damala's friends took in the girl. No thanks to either of them. In the summer of 1889, just months after his comeback performance as Armand Duval, at just 34 years old, Jacques Damala's luck lethally ran out. He overdosed in a Paris hotel room, blazing out of his life just as violently as he had blazed in. Reportedly, Bernhardt was on stage when news of Damala's overdose came through the wires. However, the cautious managers of the production only told her after she finished her performance. Bernhardt never quite got over Damala's death and wore black in mourning for a year afterward. She sent a bust she had made of him to sit on his grave in Athens, and also made a point to visit his final resting place when she toured the area. Still, perhaps her most touching tribute is the one almost no one knows about. Bernhardt reportedly changed her mind and secretly had her name legally changed to Sarah Bernhardt Damala. 
She used this name until her death in 1923. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos.